actress Ashley Judd's sexual harassment lawsuit against Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein has been dismissed by a Los Angeles federal court. Judge Philip Gutierrez ruled on Wednesday that Ms. Judd's allegations did not fall within the scope of the statute under which she had sued, but Ms. Judd's defamation claim that Mr. Weinstein had sabotaged her career. Ms. Diopri said, the judge said, Mr. Weinstein denies all allegations of sexual harassment and intimidation. Ms. Judd's sexual harassment lawsuit was refiled following a change in California state law after her initial claim was rejected by Judge Gutierrez last September. She alleges she rejected unwanted advances from him, and he then tried to wreck her career. But in a statement late on Wednesday, Judge Gutierrez said the law that deals with sexual misconduct claims in professional relationships, which was revised to include directors and producers, could not be applied retrospectively to Ms. Judd's case. Mr. Weinstein's lawyer, Phyllis Kapferstein, welcomed the judge's decision. We have said from the beginning that this claim was unjustified, and we are pleased that the courts on it as we did, she said in a statement, adding, we believe that we will ultimately prevail on her remaining claims. However, Ms. Judd's claim that the Oscar-winning producer, Blackboard, her, after she refused his advances would still be heard, Judge Gutierrez said that part of her lawsuit states that Weinstein used his power in the entertainment industry to damage his job's reputation and limit her ability to find work. In 2017, Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson said he had been considering Ms. Judd for a role in the 2002 film, but that she was blacklisted. Following conversations with the Weinstein company, he said that Mr. Weinstein had warned him that the actress was a nightmare to work with. Mr. Weinstein, however, said he had no role in Mr. Jackson's casting and denied trying to derail Ms. Judd's career. The producer still faces a separate criminal case involving five allegations of sexual assault, including rape. His lawyers have argued that civil cases should not be heard until the criminal investigation is concluded. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist. Group Ashbab in six airstrikes in Somalia. A four airstrikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28. It said in a statement, these were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of airstrikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in airstrikes since the beginning of 2017. Far more than the previous 10 years combined, the latest strikes bring to at least 30 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the United States military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since it is special 
Forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The United States military said, alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia. The United States Africa Command said, Al Shabaab, which is linked to Al Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the High Royal Institute said in a report published in November that Al Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes. The institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases, but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay. It taxes had increased markedly. The United States State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist safe haven and said that it should have remained a threat. Despite suffering setbacks, the group retained the control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high profile attacks. Using full side bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms, the report added, a popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Huawei's chief finance officer, Meng Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in Eastern Henan Province said, it would waive the $9.40.65 yuan ticket fee for anyone carrying a Huawei phone. Ms. Man, who was given bail in Canada, faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has upped tensions with China. Use Huawei phones, should grant photos on the mountain. A notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world who support who are in success in the bliss. The offer would last until 29 December, the South China Morning Post reported, but it was met with some criticism among China's social media users who claimed it was discriminatory. Who are we phone owners are being offered other enticements too. They can get a 20% discount at a bar in Beijing. Seen in Beijing, bring a who are we phone and get 20% off. Similar to this story, we covered yesterday HTTPS, T, CoQXL1IYPQLPIC, Twitter, ComSocreLove. End of Twitter post by at Luo Shinji. At least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Manpada Shenzhen, based led the display manufacturer offered subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone. United States prosecutors alleged Ms. Main. 46. Use the Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions on Iran between 2009 and 2014. They also allege she publicly misrepresented Skycom as being a separate company from Huawei and that she deceived banks about the true relationship between the two companies. Ms. Men who is the daughter of Huawei's founder, has denied any wrongdoing and said she will contest the allegations. Life of Huawei's high-flying heiress The United States has been investigating the Chinese telecoms giant, the world's second-largest smartphone maker.
since 2016, believing that it used Skycom to bring the United States manufacturing equipment and millions of dollars in transactions to Iran in violation of sanctions. This man's detention comes amid an increasingly acrimonious trade dispute between Washington and Beijing. China is angry at her detention, saying she has not violated any laws. Beijing has threatened severe consequences unless Canada releases the executive. Since her arrest, two Canadians, a former diplomat and a businessman, have been detained in China on suspicion of harming national security. United States President Donald Trump said last week that he might intervene in the United States Justice Department's case against Ms. Men if it would serve national security interests or help achieve a trade deal with China. If I think it's good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made which is a very important thing. What's good for national security? I would certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary, he told the Reuters news agency. Canada reacted by urging Mr. Trump not to politicize the situation.